Time lapses and hyperlapses are two of the coolest techniques you can do as a filmmaker. And in today's video, you're going to learn how to edit them in DaVinci Resolve. You may also have some issues with your time lapses or hyperlapses, and I'm going to show you some tools on how to fix them. So first things first, there's a few ways to shoot a time lapse. You can take photos in specific intervals, or you can even record a video. Now, DaVinci Resolve will not accept raw files from your mirrorless camera. Drones, on the other hand, with the raw settings enabled, do take DNG files. Therefore, you can just drag and drop them here into the timeline. But say you shoot a time lapse and you have all these raw files, what are you going to do? So what you'll want to do is open up the folder where you have your time lapse. Then the next thing you'll want to do is find the folder of where all the photos are. Then you're going to need a third party program, which is free. It's called Adobe DNG Converter. Once you've downloaded DNG Converter, you're going to want to select the folder of where the pictures are. So the easiest way to do that is just go up to here where it says select folder and then drag and drop the folder into this window and click select. Then what you wanna do is create a new folder. I name it DNG, come back to the converter, select the folder of where you want the converted images to go. Go ahead and drag the DNG folder into that window and then click select. And then what you'll wanna do is click convert. Now I've already done that for some of my time lapses. So once it's done converting fully, all you'll need to do is drag the DNG file into the window of DaVinci Resolve. And since my camera is using the full sensor readout, it's not a 16 by nine. So the first thing you'll wanna do is zoom in on the inspector up here in the right hand corner until it fills up the entire screen. Now, depending on how many photos your camera took will determine how long the time lapse is in your timeline. Now this looks really cool, it's amazing, but for my personal taste, what I'm going to want to do is right click on the clip and select Retime Controls and actually speed it up to about 300%. Next, what I would do is come into here on the color tab and start my color correction. So the first thing I would do is come over here to the normal primary wheels and add some contrast and some saturation. Then I would create a new node and just pull down on the highlights a little bit and maybe bring up the midtones just because the shadows are pretty dark. I could either do this with the curves like so, or I could come down here to the shadows and pull these babies up like so. Next, what I like to do is look at the vector scope. And I'm noticing that I could definitely pump in some more saturation. So I'm going to go ahead and just basically turn up the node here like so to about right there. And then also I'm going to add a little bit of color boost. I'm gonna play through the image and just kind of see where things are sitting. I'm gonna bring up my blacks just a little bit. Then what I'd like to do is come over here, add another node, click on the sharpen and blur tool, click on the sharpen option and drag this down to about 46. I'm going to kind of zoom in here and turn up the level to about 19 and then turn up the coring softness to about, let's see, about 14. Now, if I zoom in and come down here to the shadows, I'm zooming in really far. You can see there is some noise. It's not too bad, but it is there. So if you want to correct that, you can create a new node, make that in the very beginning of your node tree. And in order to create a new node before a node, all you do is hold down shift and press S. Then I come down here to the motion effects and I turn on some noise reduction. Now, if you want a full explanation on noise reduction, I will leave a link at the end of this video so you guys can check it out. It covers everything from A to B, so make sure to check that out if you want to have some more knowledge on noise reduction. Now, as far as white balance goes, I would have done that first, but I know that I shot this at 5,600 Kelvin, and I felt like that was a pretty good white balance for this scene, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Now, I shot this time-lapse using aperture priority mode on my camera, and sometimes what happens is you will get a flickering effect in your time-lapse, and it's not a very pleasing thing. It doesn't really happen here, but in case something like that does happen, what you can do on a new node is come up here to the open effects and scroll down until you see Resolve FX Revival. You'll want to come down to where it says Deflicker. Go ahead and drag that on that node. And then up here, you can see the default is Deflicker settings is time-lapse. There's other options here like fluorescent lights, and then you can do some more advanced controls. But for the most part, where I've had an issue in the past where I have had flickering in my time lapse, this tool does a great job of getting rid of it. Okay, so let's move on to hyperlapses. Hyperlapses are amazing. They're basically moving time lapses. So here I have a hyperlapse. It's a real quick one. It's already been stabilized, but I'm assuming that if you shoot a hyperlapse, you're going to need to stabilize it. So come over here to the inspector and turn on stabilization. I also have another video that I've done that covers everything that you need to know about stabilization. So check that out as well in case you need a refresher or want to learn some new things about stabilization. 
So if your hyperlapse is a video, then you won't need to do the conversion process. But if it is, and you drop it into DaVinci Resolve, this is something that you need to keep in mind. Your shutter was probably really quick. So therefore you're going to capture the moment without motion blur really. Once you've done your color corrections, I'm not gonna do anything crazy here. I'm just going to show you what I would do on every hyperlapse because it makes it look buttery smooth. So on the first node or second node after noise reduction, you'll want to come down here to the motion effects and come over here to the motion blur options. You wanna select better and then depending on which movement you want the motion blur to affect in the video, you'll want to select small, medium, or large. I usually keep it on medium. And as you can see, as I crank this up, you will see motion blur happening within this clip. Now, if I select large, you can see how that affects the video. And if I select small, you can see how that affects the video. So you can figure out your taste on how you want the motion blur. But like I said, I usually keep it on medium. It gives it a nice buttery look. And as far as coloring goes, you guys can apply the same techniques as I showed you on the time-lapse portion of this video to hyperlapses. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.